Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of my Project Ultron, which is going to be a real robot. Because it's an Iron Man suit's a costume, but Ultron isn't a costume, there's no one inside. So there's an extensive explanation in part one, which was only a couple of weeks ago, so be sure to check out that video if you haven't done so already. This time we're going to be building a motion capture suit, which is going to be the sort of social seed for Ultron's brain. So there's more explanation in that in part one. I'd like to add that obviously Hulkbuster is still ongoing, which was last week's video, and I'm actually actively working on it at the moment. But I can't do it every week because it takes me time to kind of plan things and think of things and buy things and make things and stuff for it to arrive for it. So that is definitely ongoing. I've got the legs right here, which are having their ankle locks built as we speak as well. If you'd like to help support my projects, all my projects are funded through my Patreon campaign. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots, where xrobots superfans fund my projects. And hopefully I can build this into a content production business, producing content that's watched by the people who really want to see it and funded by them. So you can get some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me, but also now you can get all my videos earlier, or at least my main build videos. Instead of waiting to Tuesday, those are published on a Sunday for patrons only and have been for some time. So funding on it is on a per video basis and you can fund for as little as $1 per video and only charge patrons for my main build videos. But you can also cap that to another amount, like a dollar a month. So for $1 a month, you can get all my videos early and my live broadcast, which is about every five to six weeks or more often if people want them and some other rewards which are detailed on the page, so have a look at that. All right, so let's get on with this motion capture suit. Last time we looked at um, an inertial measurement unit, which was the Adafruit BNO055, and we also looked at some Bluetooth adapters, so I was able to um, capture the data for these, and these are nine axes, so they have accelerometer, gyro, and magnetometer in three axes each. Um, and as you tilt them round, they just chuck out the actual angle. So they do a lot of the maths there for you, combining the filters. So I was able to put that into um, an Arduino that reads them over I squared C, chuck that over Bluetooth and read the results um, on a Bluetooth receiver at the other end. So this time we're going to try and mount um, six of these BNOs. I've got six here all together. We're going to mount those on my body using some things I bought off eBay that haven't arrived yet but we really need to try and get some of these things mounted on some sort of waist belt. So um, obviously the Arduino with its Bluetooth shield, um, a power supply and a battery. So I've got um, a little LiPo there, which is a half amp hour. So that should be enough to power it for quite a few hours. The Bluetooth shield only draws a maximum of 100 milliamps. So even at 500 milliamp hour, um, that should, should last a good few hours. And I've got another one to swap out and I could obviously power this with this regulator from anything really. So another LiPo in my back pocket or any other battery. Um, I've got six connectors here, which are USB breakout connectors. These are also Adafruit parts. I'm gonna use these to run cables that detach to the um, BNOs. So um, although they're not actually USB, USB conveniently has four connectors in which I need. So I'm going to use those and I am going to absor um, observe the zero and five volt pins. So if anyone does plug USB in by accident, it doesn't shove five volts up the data lines and break whatever they plug in. I've also got something I didn't show you last time, which is an Adafruit I squared C multiplexer. And that allows me to connect several I squared C devices with the same address to one Arduino and effectively it's like an I squared C switch you can send a command to and it will switch to a different port then you can read the next sensor so I've actually spent quite a long time trying to make this work for the two BNOs that I've got connected here I ended up going to Adafruit support but then fixing it myself before they could reply so we're going to look at that in detail um, but first of all I'm going to try and print a sort of chassis to mount all these things on so that I can wear it and then we'll look at how I'm going to mount these other sensors around the other parts of my body. So here's a very basic chassis design. It's obviously a plate with a lot of holes in. The red thing there is going to be the battery that I showed you. Um, above there there's four um, holes. One of those is the I squared C multiplexer. The other one is for the power supply. To the left bottom there's four holes which are for the Arduino and its Bluetooth shield. And then all of the ones across the top there are to mount on all of those breakouts. So um, hopefully this is going to slip into what we call a bum bag in the UK. And I may put a lid on it, but I haven't decided. 
Um, hopefully it does fit. I've ordered a couple off eBay that I haven't got yet, but I can't really make it any smaller unless I start stacking it. Although the Bluetooth shield does stick up quite a bit on top of the Arduino, so it's kind of tall as it is. So I think I'm going to print this out, um, and then we can start wiring the thing up and getting it working, and then if we have to adapt it to fit on a waist belt, we'll do that later. Here's my printed chassis, which uh, has come out okay. It's quite thick, so I can get screws into it. So obviously my Arduino will mount onto these four screws here. Power supply mounts on here. Looks like all the holes line up. I've got six places for the breakout boards to mount all along the top. And we've also got those holes there for the I squared C multiplexer, whichever one it is. There we go. I also have a money belt stroke bum bag thing which has arrived today so that's got two pockets which look like they're big enough to put this in. There may be a hard case over this but either way it will fit in the pocket and this has got a waist strap. And I've also got some of these which are sort of like running things you put your phone in and it's an armband. Uh, these are velcro so I can extend the strap easily with another bit of velcro to go around my legs. And obviously these will fit on my arms in multiple positions. Um, they're quite big, they're only really to hold the um, BNOs, but um, of course I can make a nice 3D printed thing here that's got an LED on so I can see they've got power and they're powered up, um, and sort of make a feature of that. So I'll have these over the left side of my body as discussed in part one. So I better get that assembled. I've just got an Arduino here with the multiplexer, uh, which is a TCA9554A, which is an Adafruit part. And I've got my two BNOs, and you'll notice one is on its edge there, and it still works and gives me rotation and it gives me the pan and tilt um, numbers in each axis. So I've got two of these wired up with a multiplexer and it's working. Now I had some problems getting these to initialize and we'll have a look at the code in a moment. But if you have a look on the screen here, you should be able to see a bunch of data getting spewed out. So we've got three axes for each, so six lots of data in total. If I wiggle these round a bit, you should be able to see those numbers changing as I rotate them through all axis. So the one on its edge that I'm turning now is the second set of numbers. And the first one is the other one. So if I wiggle all of those around, you can see all those numbers going crazy. And that's giving me the actual degrees of rotation for each one. This is the Adafruit support forum. Adafruit are pretty good at support. Um, so I logged a ticket in here. I had some problems getting the um, BNOs to initialize when I was using the multiplexer so um, they basically didn't seem to work there's a utility that scans the ports and founds the two BNOs attached to the multiplexer um, and basically the code is pretty simple all you have to do is um, sort of do this TCA select which is a function and um, then it'll talk to a different port so it'll select a port and then you should be able to initialize the sensor and it, and it should initialize it um, I was having some issues where it didn't initialize it and it just gave me the error handling message um, but before they could reply I actually found out that in fact what I needed to do for some reason was initialize it twice which is what I'm now doing in the code so I've got one set of selecting the port on the TCA initializing the first one uh, selecting the next port initializing it then doing it again with error handling um, and then I find it works okay and I've put um, some error handling in there if it's okay it says it's okay so you know it's okay and then it goes on to do the rest of the code and we'll scan through that in a minute um, Adafruit su support responded quite soon afterwards to say it could be a timing issue because the BNO uses an I squared C technique called clock stretching um, which does something weird basically which the multiplexer doesn't like but effectively if the solution is to um, initialize it twice then why not so here's my code, um, basically we've got libraries in the top, we've got the wire library for I squared C, we've got the sensor library, so there's this sensor framework Adafruit have put together so you can address all the sensors in the same way. We've got the BNO library and the maths library, uh, which does some various things. I'm not sure if I'm actually using that or whether that's used in the BNO library. Either way, it's there because that's what's in the example. So I'm initializing the um, TCA, the multiplexer there, with its base address. And you can define more than one if you need more than six I squared C addresses on the same address or devices on the same address. So you can have multiple multiplexers. Um, and I'm initialising my two BNOs there with separate names, BNO1 and BNO2. This is the function that lets the TCA do a select. 
So all you have to do is TCA select and a number for the port. So there's zero and one, and this will eventually go all the way through all six. And then initializing each B and O, and then doing them again with the error handling. And this seems to work okay. Then all you need to do to actually read them is um, this get event for the sensor library. Select which I squared C port you want on the multiplexer and get event. And then it basically puts the um, data into one of these variables for X, Y, and Z. And this is for four decimal places. And then select the other one, and then I can do the same thing for that one. So basically, it just gives me the angle. I don't have to do any complicated maths, filtering those sensors, doing any complementary filters, doing any arc tan, anything like that. It just gives me the angle, and that's printed to the serial terminal. And eventually, that will be printed to the serial terminal over Bluetooth to Ultron's brain. All right. I'm just wiring up these things, so I've screwed on all my connectors and I'm just wiring ground and 5 volts to everyone. Then I need to wire two pins to the multiplexer, power and 5 volts to that, which goes to the power supply. And then the pins out of this to the Arduino. So I've got some uh, cheap USB cables I got for about a pound each and I've cut the ends off. That's going to go to the B&O and then each one will of course plug into each of its connector. Just like that, so I've got six connectors for the six sensors. My board is all wired up, so I've got all the components there and all my connectors connected with I2C and power and Bluetooth on there. And I've got all of my B&Os are now attached to these wires that plug in. So for each B&O mount, they need to fit into the uh, pocket things I've got. And I've made these plates that fit in, so I'm going to have a blue LED on each one there, mounted through this hole with the resistor just wired onto 5 volts. So they all light up and I can see that they've all got power. I'm going to make a, um, a smaller one to mount on my head, which is going to mount on a headset, but we'll look at that in a moment. So I now have them all wired up, and I have all of my B&Os down on the floor there, and they've all got these blue LEDs in their pouches wired in, which is quite nice. Kind of diffuses through the plastic. I've got one more here to mount on the head mount, which we'll look at shortly. That bit of plastic is still printing. So I've got all six wired in. They're all plugged into my USB breakouts and everything's working. So this is um, paired to Bluetooth. The other Bluetooth board is just over here. And if we have a look at the screen, we should be able to see all that data streaming. So we should have six, le six lots of three numbers, for three axes in each one. I've got the last one here, which is number six. And if I wiggle that round, you can see the numbers changing right on the end, on the far right, which is about right, because that's the sixth one. And if I just shuffle the others around the floor, you can see all of those numbers going crazy because they're all changing slightly, so that's actually working. So now I just need to get that head mount sorted and I can strap myself in. Here's my head mount, so I've just attached a smaller one of these things, again with the blue LED. I've just attached that to a headset, stuck on with a sticky pad and some zip ties, uh, but it works pretty well. Um, and the reason I've used a headset here with, a, with um, a microphone and an earphone is in case I want audio feedback in the future. For now I've just bundled the cables up, but I may want speech recognition or it to monitor my speech and um, get audio feedback, so that's quite a good way to do it. Also this headset is compatible with my glasses, so it's quite comfortable to wear and holds the sensor quite rigidly on my head. So I have all my sensors mounted now, one on each thigh, I have two on my left arm, upper and lower, and I also have one on my torso, and of course the head mount, and that data is currently streaming off through Bluetooth to my laptop still, I've got the um, transmitter and everything in this pocket here. It's fairly comfortable to wear, um, I need probably a shoulder strap on the torso and some maybe belt straps to stop these slipping down, it's okay as long as I don't breathe out. Um, it'd be quite good to have a garment that you put on that's got little pockets in perhaps or something like that or at least somewhere to velcro these on. And I probably need to extend some of the cables which of course is just a USB extension so that shouldn't be too challenging. So next time I'm going to be trying to make sense of some of the data and the plan if you watch part one is to control a prosthetic right arm which is why I have no sensors on this right arm from the data from the rest of my body. So I'm probably gonna build a small development arm made of little radio control servos and some 3D printed parts so I can try and mash this data together and see what it does. Eventually the plan is to build this full size Ultron torso to control with the AI in the middle. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out the social media links in the description to this video.